honestly. I mean, this is a little awkward because we've never met <laughs> before and it's kind of a bizarre uh, scenario that I've, I've never partaken. And to be quite honest, this is just the perfect excuse for me to get a chance to talk to you, someone who I have admired from afar for a long time. And uh, yeah, I'm just actually admiring your collection that's in behind you right now. Um, is that your yeah. uh, bandy uh, falcon up there? It is, yeah. Uh, hopefully, gonna finish painting it at some point. But that thing is that thing's bigger yeah. than I anticipated, man. I didn't think it was that big. Yeah, it it barely fits in that case. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, it's a uh, it's it's impressive. It's it's big. Right? right. Yeah. That's a that's a huge undertaking as well. It's very intimidating. Uh, so um, let me ask. Let's start with uh, outside of the hobby itself, just really quickly um, with the pandemic, like. How, how have you been dealing? How, how have you been handling that? How has it affected you? Um, you know, I mean, it's kind of on the forefront of everyone right now, you know, just how, how you're going forward with it. I mean, do you even, you know, not to get too much about it. There's some people that just don't believe in it. Right. Like, oh God, yeah. So right. Yeah. Um, yeah. That is not me. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. We've, yeah, we've been very cautious with everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, as far as how it's kind of affected me personally, I mean, I definitely miss seeing everybody. I think we, we all do. Um, but it's definitely slowed everything down, which has been quite nice. The only real hiccup that I had with any of the work has just been, um, I'd been working part-time at a local shop that one of our friends owns and I just didn't feel safe. Like we had a lockdown and then Mm -hmm. things were starting to open back up. So I had to, I had to, stop doing that which was t- a tough choice but um okay. really a- everything else just fabric was really hard to get for a couple months but mm-hmm. that seemed to kind of level out so it's just opened up a lot of time to take on new projects and mm-hmm. you know think about other things and get other stuff going overall the situation that we're in i can't complain at all sorry where are you exactly i know you're on these coast are you in massachusetts is that what is that where you are or uh, so I'm in New Hampshire and I'm really okay. close to Maine. Like I can practically, <laughs> practically see it from my window. But, oh, okay. uh, Do you guys have yeah. snow up there right now? I know uh, my family up in the East coast, a little farther North, but they got a big dump. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We got a little bit more yesterday, but yeah, we're probably at like 18 inches so far. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, I, I don't miss that. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> 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 Are you from that area? Is that where you're from as well? Yeah. So I uh, born and raised in New Hampshire. Um, poked around with maybe you know moving out to the to the west coast but we'll see what what happens we're we're pretty where, settled here now where would you go if you went to the west coast is your wife mobile uh, with her work or is she you know uh for the past couple of years she had been like you know pretty hunkered down in her workplace and um you know the pandemic kind of flipped all that but um mm-hmm. Yeah, we're, we've looked, you know, around, uh, like Oregon and kind of like in that more Northern, Northern area, but okay. we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> right. right. There's, there's well, always time. You got plenty of time. That's for sure. Um, did you watch the last episode of the Mandalorian or is that a silly question? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think? Yeah. I, I mean, how could you not love that? Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a, I, in enjoying in the Mandalorian that they're doing like the obvious fan service-y like, oh, this prop is, you know, here and like mm-hmm. this connects to that. But uh, that kind of felt like the first time it's bridging the story that we saw in the sequel trilogy with mm-hmm. what's going on in Mando. And mm-hmm. I like that because it there was a big gap like all that couldn't have just been from all of like the crumbling of what luke was doing couldn't have just been from ben uh because he was like 15 but that's fine i know i know i I think of those films mostly as fan films honestly and not in a negative way i mean it's like otherwise you can get you know star wars is interesting to me um and i'm sure you probably uh, understand this as well because it's so personal to everybody right because they usually how, how old were you when you first saw star wars I think I was like four. Four? Yeah, on yeah. V- VHS. I assume you weren't uh, enough to see it in the theater. Oh, God, no. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, we, uh, 
there's been some debate in the family as to when the first time my brother and I actually saw it. Um, okay. But I remember being at a pizza place. Uh, so my dad was a, was a cop forever. Um, okay. And so like he knew a bunch of people who worked at different shops and that sort of thing. So we, is that had, why you have the mustache? It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we actually, we look exactly alike. Um, but yeah, got the fuzz. That's, impre- the fuzz. that's an impressive mustache, my man. That's, that's <laughs> very you. thick. Very, yes, I'm very envious. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've anyway. been cultivating it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you yeah. off. No, no. Uh, so we were at a, I remember it as being a pizza place. My brother s- swears that it was a Chinese place, um, okay. but it was on ABC. And I remember the little tiny TV and seeing the crawl. And, oh, no, sure. Uh, Your are yeah, so, did you say? Yeah. And you watched it, it in was... a pizza place? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How powerful of a movie to watch it as a four-year-old in a pizza place on television and it still affects you in the way that it does. Yeah. Right? I mean, just seeing the crawl and then as soon as like the smoke cleared when they're boarding, I, it was, now, yeah, they, it was something else. Were they else. showing it at the pizza place or did it just happen to be on? Yeah, the kid who was working the counter just had it on. Okay. Okay. Did you stay there the whole time or were you like, Dad, we need to rent this film? Yeah, so we rented all of them and okay. we watched them back to back to back. It was great. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. What well, about I, you? How when did you get introduced to it? Oh, I well, um I I saw it actually in the theater, believe it or not, back in seventy oh, seven. Wow. Yeah. I was a I was like very young. I was like three years old, very extremely young. And I have no memory of seeing it in the theater. Zero memory of seeing it in the theater. But I do have very specific memory of watching the trailer on television. And the reason being is because my parents took my two older brothers to go watch it. And because I was young, they didn't really know what it was. They thought it was going to be too scary for me, right, to see this film. So, But I have a very strong visual of watching the trailer and um, knowing they were at the theater watching this film. And I was so (laughs) envious and I was glued. And then my mom came home and she was like, oh, John, you're going to love this movie. And just, and I was like, so they, I, I don't know if it was the next night, but they end up taking me very shortly after to go see it. So That's um, awesome. I, yeah. And you know, as the story goes, she said, I just sat at the end of the seat. I'm sure like every kid did <laughs> yeah. and just like, you know, mind blown, you know, the only film I remember seeing in the theater honestly was uh, Jedi. Okay. But, but by then it was six years later. So I was probably like nine or so. Well, not yeah. probably I was, <laughs> but it, yeah. So, um, but yeah, it, it obviously very much resonated. I mean, uh, uh, what are your, f- let me ask you another question. Sorry, if you don't mind, um, yeah. including star Wars, it doesn't have to be star Wars, but what are your top three films of, uh, that you, your go-to into, if you could just take three films with you on a deserted Island, just yeah. for the pure enjoyment of it. Yeah. Those comfort films for sure. Yes. Um, definitely empire. Mm-hmm. Raiders and Ghostbusters, which Ghostbusters. are like everybody's. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't even sub uh, Ghost. I mean, you can't go wrong with Ghostbusters, dude. Yeah. Right? You can't go wrong with that. I would sub Ghostbusters for Jaws for me personally, and that's it. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah, but I mean, it's like you 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 can't lose. You're you're definitely not going to lose, um, for sure. Um, but uh, uh, and within that Star Wars world, so Empire is your favorite film, you said, right? It it is there is something I like. I enjoy how much of a continuation it is, as opposed to a sequel. Um, it's sure. a real tough call between A New Hope and an Empire, though, because yeah. A New Hope is just so unique. Mm-hmm. Um, not that you know Empire isn't, but yeah, I don't know. There's the rewatchability of of Empire is easy. Yeah. <laughs> easy i you yeah, know, it's, it's I, comfort I, I i agree with you and and you know like i i view star wars and empire like you know like godfather one and godfather two it's like they're the same film they they almost they're different films obviously but they're so complementary to each other yeah. and in such a magical way and they're not a duplication of the other one they they they're like a, a four-hour film if you put it together and you're not revisiting anything i mean it's the perfect two films together you know, yeah. as far as sequels are concerned and everything else. I think Ray, uh, Jedi drops a little bit in that spectrum, but those two films as a whole, yeah, I, I, I always give the nudge to Empire just because of everything that it involves for me personally, like with the puppetry, the stop motion, just yeah. everything, right? Like it's just so 
there's a there's a puppet in it, for God's sake that actually is a believable <laughs> character, right? In the eighties, <laughs> for God, you know what I mean? Like it's it it truly blows your mind, and it still holds up, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, yeah. It's, I mean, it's yeah, really Frank Oz, powerful. right? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, for sure, man. Jim Henson as well. <laughs> yeah. Know? Well, yeah. <laughs> right. Um. So, what do you think about the uh the prequels? Not hating on anything, but what do you what do you what do you what do you think about the prequels? I feel pretty similar to the sequels where um, I really love the story that they are trying to tell. Uh-huh. Um, I, execution now, wise. May I ask a quick question? How old were you when yeah. you saw them? Sorry. Oh, uh, Phantom Menace. I would have been nine. Um, okay. okay. And so kind of from there, cause it was what, it was the same kind every of gap, right? Every three years. Yeah. Well, I think that's a great age to to see it. To be honest with you, right? Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. You're certainly not going to intellectualize it as a nine year old. I wouldn't think. Right. Yeah. Right. So, like any of the plot devices or uh, things that, as an adult, you may be critical about, I don't. I don't think you'd see that as a nine year old, right? Yeah, for sure. And I think you know. I mean, a lot of the stuff that you know George has said in interviews, George, like I. Like I know him, I don't. <laughs> right, right. I, we, all, we all feel the same way. It's 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 the most it's the most bizarre thing about Star Wars is it really is personal to you though, and in yeah. a positive way. No, you. Yeah. It's I've never seen a fandom that takes such ownership of something that they don't really own, and and yeah. that's that's the empowerment of what George Lucas has done. He's allowed people to do that, right? He's never really yeah. put that on lockdown. But anyway, sorry. Go ahead. George was. Oh telling, yeah. George was telling you something. Yeah, uh, you know, during one of our, our family dinners, uh, you know, he's those movies were made for a younger audience, mm-hmm. for sure. Like it's just they they were just made to f- capture a younger audience. Um, mm-hmm. So you know, you have more gags in it, and mm-hmm. it just is what it is. Um, but mm-hmm. again, like I think the the actual story arc of Anakin mm-hmm. is really a. Gr- I mean, I think. Um, in uh the disney plus show what is it called um the mandalorian the The, uh the companion uh gallery where feloni is talking about like what that story you know of anakin and like your Mm -hmm. dad and how like that Mm -hmm. always resonated with me and it's just it's again execution was it is what it is that there's a lot of great technical stuff Mm -hmm. in it um to appreciate but it's clunky (laughs) It is. Yeah. But I mean, like it's, you know, and I, I think a lot of that has to do um, with, well, I don't see this. I would ask you this question because there was such a gap for me between Jedi and the, um, the prequels that, you know, you grew up with these toys and you're able to play in this world. And, you know, there was just, it was never really going to come back. Right. So you, you kind of create your own idea of what these worlds are. So then even though it's George Lucas's story and he's presenting it to you, there's still a part of you that kind of is like, Oh wait, what is this? I'm not, this doesn't seem normal. Right. This isn't how I imagined it or my create create creativity or whatnot. So I think that really puts people off a little bit. But then over time has been kind to them though. I mean, you know, I'm like, I, I, I saw it. Um, when did it come out? 99? Is that when it came out? Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere around there. So I was in my twenties at the time and I just remember coming, I was so pumped to see that movie, dude. We went to go watch the uh, uh, trailer before another film. Like, what was the show? <laughs> in, right. Um, yeah. It was, it, I, it was something weird that it, it was paired with. Right, it was, it was in a cartoon, wasn't it, or something? I can't remember, but I know that that film had huge gross yeah. the first weekend. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and then, so I just remember seeing it and then walking out and just kind of being like, what did I watch? Like, it was just so different. But, you know, I mean, I, I you know, I'm, I'm a fan, so it's, I'm, uh, I'm all, you give me more Star Wars, I'm going to be happy. That's really what it boils down to, right? Yeah. And then yeah. even with the, um, I know we touched on it kind of, but, uh, with the uh, Disney follow-ups. Did you enjoy those? I definitely enjoy them. Um, the Force Awakens was one of the best theater experiences I've, I've ever had, yeah. uh, for sure. Like, just seeing it with my, my now wife um, and my mm-hmm. brother and just sharing in that was so great. And I also, I find that movie really rewatchable. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I kind of just felt like 
the Force Awakens and then Rise of Skywalker were mm-hmm. kind of what the three movies were su- supposed to be. Sure. Because mm-hmm. it just it covers so much. Um, and again, I feel for um, The Last Jedi, I really like the message of it, but I also don't need a character literally telling me that I shouldn't care about the parts of Star Wars that I care about. Right. Like, it right. breaks, like, the first rule of screenwriting, show, don't tell, and you have mm-hmm. characters who are, like, talking about it. Mm-hmm. It's very right. serious. <laughs> and not, like, in a tongue-in-cheek, but, mm-hmm. you know, winking at the camera way. Um, right. So, I, I don't know. That's it's a... Th- those were a roller coaster, but I it, I enjoy them. I right. rewatch them. Yeah, for sure. And uh, 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 that's, I think, the biggest... Um, I don't know if you've watched any of these videos that have come out where they show people... Uh, filming themselves so they watch the mandalorian you know oh and yeah like the react yeah right they're, they're fun to watch um i i was actually a little bit uh the the luke skywalker aspect was a little bit spoiled for me because i saw that on a post somewhere that he was going to be in the show a little bit it didn't ruin yeah. the experience for me i mean i thank god there wasn't a camera on me because i think i teared up myself you know <laughs> yeah. um but i feel like that is what we wanted i'm oh, sorry i can't speak for you i'll speak for myself i feel like that is what i wanted from the rise of skywalker right so like you yeah. know i think that was really jarring to accept this plot point in the story because once they put him there and especially with them dying at the end you're like oh that's all we're getting that's that's you yeah. have this 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 great character and that's all we're getting you know like um so it was really amazing to see what they did with the mandalorian it was really it was really fun it was it was uh, it was like rogue one kind of you know is that kind of that moment yeah. that just kind of you're like oh this is going to be good this could be really oh wow right like it was really really quite exciting did you have yeah. a lot of star wars toys growing up as well i did yeah so um i got into it um actually i can see them behind you um right when they started to release the super muscular uh figures oh, sure yeah yeah, yeah, so we had we had all those, um, yeah. but My overall, got... like, mm-hmm. oh, I was just gonna say, like, merchandise wise, I honestly don't own too much. Um, mm. I have hoarding tendencies, so I try and keep that in check. Okay. Um, yeah, I can feel you. There. But yeah, and we had some of like the vintage figures and stuff if we could find them, you know, mm-hmm. at yard sales and everything. But yeah, mm-hmm. it started off with those big buff to Han Solo and Luke Skywalker, and sure. yeah. Yeah, those are actually, uh, uh, my wife got those from our neighbor across the street um, for a garage sale, believe it or not. Oh, nice. The worst, one of the worst things about, um, I'm, you know, well, people knowing that I like Star Wars is because, you know, I generally don't advertise now. It seems like it's just blown up, but that's all people give you, right? Yeah. yeah. Give you the most obscure Star Wars shit. And I'm like, I, I kind of, I have my own taste and I thank you, but, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's an easy, easy go to, honestly. Um, yeah, although I am wearing my. Uh, oh, very nice. <laughs> very nice. Yes, yes. I think I have uh, an R two D two sweater, Christmas nice. sweater, right? Um, that was another thing. Even just like seeing R two again and doing like the Kenny yeah. Baker, little mm-hmm. jostle was nice. It was, man. It was. What did you think of the CGI for or motion capture or whatever, whatever that technology is? Sorry, the. Um. I was kind of more impressed with the de-aging of Mark Hamill's voice. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. The I, <sighs> It was impressive, actually. It really was yeah. impressive. Yeah. Um, I thought it looked really good, and I thought it hit the, the marks that it needed to. It did definitely feel like a more reserved Luke, like we do see in Return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like I think I'm just tainted right now because like I was just watching like the deep fake versus you know whatever Lucasfilm had done, um, right. but with those you do get such an advantage of you already have the source mm-hmm. you don't have to do any of the you know it's work but it, you know you don't have to to work around that because you already have a source that you can then improve upon, um, mm-hmm. but it looks better than Leia and Rogue One. Uh, well, yeah. Even though I I love that, but what about Tarkin? What did you think of that? What did you think about that when you saw Rogue One? I was. It's creepy. Um, mm-hmm. It's creepy in the way that uh, he just generally looks creepy. But it it did feel like a little translucent in a weird way. Mm-hmm. But 
Yeah, it, it, I was a little shocked when I saw it because I can't remember if I knew he was in it or not. I honestly don't remember, but I do remember my biggest thought was or takeaway from it was, oh my God, they're almost there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're almost, like it doesn't look real 100%, but they're almost there because I was, it was real enough that it didn't dis, it, uh, detract from the story. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. It was really kind of, really kind of shocking. Um, yeah. Uh, so obviously Adam, I know, um, you started out building, uh, blasters, obviously, right. Um, that, that, at least that's how my introduction, that's how I was aware of you originally was building blasters, but I, I've done a, a little bit and I know that you, when did you first join RPF and, uh, the proper replica forum? Oh yeah, no. Um, I had been following it for a couple of years and it was when they were still doing the, um, like enrollment period where you had to wait until like April or whatever it was for those couple oh, wow. of days to sign up. Um, so I think my account on there is, from like 2008 but i had been mm-hmm. following it for a couple of years before that like just kind of like stocking it like popping in reading different things kind of thing just before yeah. and so what 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 kept you back from joining right away just um because they missed the enrollment period yeah or... i just i just always missed the enrollment period <laughs> okay okay um and what was the first um what was the first thing you actually took upon yourself to create in, in uh, uh what was it the uh was it a Boba Fett costume? Um, I had done like a, these are, you know, all of our first projects are so sure. janky, but um, sure. I think I had done a, like a bust of Boba Fett and I had done uh, like before, you know, 3D printing and like all of, it was when Pepecora was still like, like the big, the big thing. So I had done I don't like an know, Iron Man I don't helmet. I that is to be honest with you. Peppercorn. Oh yes, yeah. so it was it was a program where you could input a 3D model and it would essentially unfold it and uh, make it into pretty much a puzzle that had little tabs. So you would you know use an Exacto and cut out all the pieces and then glue the tabs for the seam so you oh, could no rebuild shit. that. Really? Yeah, yeah. So oh, wow. I mean that was it's people like, were doing like that. Origami almost. Fiberglass. Yeah. Oh wow. So what was the what was your first endeavor though? What was the first thing you took upon yourself? You're like, I'm gonna create this, or did you buy something first? Like, was it a was your induction? Oh no, I never had the money. <laughs> right, of course, that is the same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so your first your first introduction to it was you building something for yourself then. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, you no, know, I had always been um, like a maker you know, since I was a kid, I was always building stuff. So I, it was hard to like, say like, okay, this is the project that, you know, sprung sure. everything else. Um, sure. But I would no, say like the, f- sorry. So you were, oh. were you always able to draw? Were you very creative? Do you have an ability to draw? Would you say? Yeah. So I dropped out of art school, uh, okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm more of um, like a painter. I, my illustration skills aren't super great but uh i was always very good at sculpting so that's kind of how like i would always be my entire bedroom growing up was always full of cardboard so i could cut it up and hot glue it and no shit try and make something yeah so what was the first thing you made as a kid then i mean like what was it what's what's some memories of yours that you were creative with um i took a hacksaw and mm-hmm. I cut down some pipe and wrapped electrical tape around it. And that was my lightsaber hilt for a oh, while. Shit. I was, okay. I even, um, I was like seven or something, but I took my dad's drill. It was an mm-hmm. old Makita, the, like the big green one. And mm-hmm. I had drilled a hole through it and I put the, uh, like key ring on it to try and make some type of like way to hook it onto stuff. But Oh wow! Yeah, that, that's I remember running around the yard with the with the pipe and the broomstick. Awesome. I think I just had a hockey stick that I taped up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and nunchucks was my big thing. We'd always make nunchucks out of hockey sticks as well. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. They, you know, um, but within uh, uh, so when you got involved with, and I don't even bring up RPF only because it seems to be a uh, major influence on a lot of people as far as, you know, it's, it seems to be the go-to as far as, um, well, replicating props or anything, honestly, that involves, that was once on a movie set or elsewhere, really, right? Yeah, um, and I am kind of still of the opinion, I understand why the forum got broken up into, like, the different subgroups for, like, different franchises and stuff, mm-hmm. but I do miss 
when everything was just kind of thrown together, like if it was a costume, it went just into the costume board. Because mm-hmm. um, I feel like I miss a lot of other like really amazing makers and costumers and mm-hmm. people doing models and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's for a long time, it felt like it was the only place online. I mean, there was Prop Summit um, mm-hmm. and like, uh, I think Fedora Lounge had some indie stuff, but there mm-hmm. wasn't, you know, it was pretty much just on the RPF. Right. Well, that was the one place where it seemed to gather everything. Yeah. You know, it was like the one-stop shop as far as um, 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 what you, whatever your interests were, you could kind of, you, and you still can. The one nice thing about it is for the most part, you can still go back through all the threads and, and see what people have laid ahead of you and, you know, pick up, um, in many different places, which is, which is a great gift to anyone who wants to get involved or is, has an inkling to be creative. You know, I mean, it's, it's the one place where you can kind of, it's a kind of intimidating. I mean, I, I I'm oh, always yeah. intimidated yeah. by it at first. And, and I think it's, it's now it's gotten so saturated and so big that, you know, it's kind of really grown. Um, but when I, I was probably, I don't know what year I joined, but it was probably a couple of years after that, like maybe 2010, I can't remember what it was. Um, mm-hmm. but I just lurked. I, I didn't have the nerve to even let alone post anything for God's sake. Cause it was just, it was just more of like an admiration thing. It was just kind of like an inspirational thing. Right. Um, yeah. it's, and it's quite intimidating actually, uh, to get involved with originally. Yeah. I will say I did always find the RPF really encouraging. Mm-hmm. Um, there, I have found like, um, some of the other, like uh, sites that had popped up that were more franchise specific would skew a little bit more negative. Um, But, you know, if you, I mean, I, my first post on the RPF or, you know, nothing special at all, but Mm -hmm. you always have somebody who's going to, you know, encourage you and Mm -hmm. would compliment you and, you know, give you a, an actual useful suggestion that wasn't like you idiot. Why aren't you doing (laughs) it this way? Sure. That's definitely true. So then um, how did you get involved with what's, how did you actually, cause you actually do this. I mean, uh, from you say you are working part-time as well, but at one point you actually went full time into what you're doing. Right. And you know, I mean, you, you build uh, amazing um, cosplay replicas. I don't know how you describe it. And, and you're, I would say from what I've seen, you're pretty much only limited by time and whatever direction you want to go in. Right. I mean, I don't, I think at this point, I'm sorry, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but I think oh, no, no. at this, at this point, you know, you know, uh, you, you how, let me just I know, ask another question. Like, so um, have you always been comfortable around a sewing machine? Uh, is that something you have, you learn over time or cause that you, I would imagine by now you're pretty comfortable with it. Yeah. So, um, I really, honestly, it's, this has only been like, you know, full time since the pandemic, um, okay. when things did slow down. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, as far as like the, um, the sewing goes, it's, uh, I had done like some kind of cosplaying, like cosplaying where you could, you know, buy most of the stuff like off the rack. So like I did, um, like Dexter and that sort of thing where you can just, go down the list and be like, okay, this is from, you know, American apparel. This is from, you know, whatever. Sure. Um, G star or whatever. Um, you just try to get then, close ultimately too, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Cause there's right? plenty of stuff where it's like close enough. So it's mm-hmm. going to work. Um, mm-hmm. and I, at that time had been working at a bar and I was eyeing, this is when, um, I know had, put up the pre-order for the Han Solo Bespin okay. outfit. And like, I had showed it to a coworker and I was like, oh, I think I'm going to order this. Like, this looks fantastic. And they were that's, like, don't, don't spend that much money on that. I was going to say, like, that's, I a, can, big I can still... <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a big purchase. Yes. That's not, that's gotta be your first big purchase then. No. Um, so I didn't end up buying it okay. because they had said that they could sew it for me. Oh. Um, and they were overly confident in their their abilities sure uh, My so i really confident as well in her abilities. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's i i uh, kid i kid she's yeah. amazing she's fantastic <laughs> but uh 
after that, I was just, I was just so disappointed because um, we had like worked out a trade and stuff. Sure. Um, but so I just said screw it, and I bought like a super cheap brother sewing machine on Amazon and just okay. kind of brute forced my way into starting to learn how to sew. Mm-hmm. Um, so at this point, it's been maybe seven years that I've been sewing, and okay. uh, really the most helpful thing is the old ladies on YouTube who make tutorials <laughs> about how to do like certain techniques sure, and they're well, 45 minutes long and very boring, but mm-hmm. they will teach you how to do it. What's the biggest thing you've learned? What's the simplest technique you could pass on? Do you think that you've learned that you, that, that you wish you would have known seven years ago? Uh, how actually easy it is to put in a zipper for like pants. Mm. Um, wrapping your head around it the first time because so much of it is is blind or you have to flip stuff over Mm -hmm. but really as soon as it clicks it's so easy so if you have somebody who can sit down and just say this is the order of operations for Mm -hmm. getting this in and like three stitches Mm -hmm. it makes such a big difference yeah are you good with both your hands like are you equally good with your right and left hand like for example i can draw really well with my right hand my left hand i might as well I can't do anything with it kind of thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I do have some dexterity in my left hand. Um, I played guitar for years. Um, I have um, a nerve issue in my, my left hand. Uh, okay. So a- a- that fatigues really easily and like I'll drop, st- <laughs> I'll drop okay. stuff. But um, yeah, for the most part, it's uh, I'm pretty, pretty even when it comes to like needing to, to do stuff on the machine. But with the leather sewing, that's, that gets really tiring really quickly, but. Oh, I bet. How do you, I mean, it's depending on how thick it is, obviously, but you just, same with the sewing machine, just kind of, you go at it or, because I, I yes. have a bigger needle, obviously, I mean. Well, yeah, so all of the uh, the leather stuff that I do is all mm-hmm. hand-stitched. Um, okay. My new machine can do garment leather, uh, but I don't like to push it that hard because um, I've blown through several sewing machines. Sure, um, I understand. But yeah, then when it comes to the leather, like you can either, like I, for the most part, use a speed stitcher, um, Mm -hmm. which you can get for, you know, doing heavy canvas or or whatever, but, um, Mm -hmm. or you actually, you know, you'll punch the holes ahead of time uh, with the chisel and and go from there. So that can, that can be a little easier in that respect, but. Mm -hmm. Well, with with the leather work that you do is amazing as well. I actually went on RPF and I read, um, the best thing about this was I, you know, it really got me into reading different forms. And uh, probably the most influential uh, thread was uh, the for the uh, holster rig was uh, one by um, Crazy Legs Murphy. I don't know who he is. Yeah. And I noticed yeah. that you were the first person to comment on his post when he started it, you know, which was really interesting yeah. because it showed, no, because it showed that you were in there right from the very beginning and, you know, you, you worked your way around, you know, and, and, um, so what was the uh uh so without the first through that thread that led you to build your first holster rig for yourself right oh yeah right? yeah and the first ones are they were janky um and that's Whatever. kind of the thing too like with so much of this and you go through it as well i know um with all the amazing stuff that you model and get printed but iterations you like uh, you just have to do it and then you look at it and you're really happy with it. And then mm. the next day you're like, uh, it's not as good as I thought it looked. Right. Uh, you just keep going. Or you notice another detail along the way, right? Someone told yeah. me, uh, perfect, perfection is the enemy of profit. <laughs> and I was like, well, then I'm not making any money. Because I, I, have, I have a single-minded focusness that I'm just trying to and and do things will turn up right like i mean uh, speaking of which like i mean i've modeled things over and over and over and i work with this guy who actually because i don't do my own cad work right so i have to sit over the shoulder of this old gentleman and literally tell him what i want and i'll sometimes he'll literally uh lose his mind lose his mind <laughs> because this is this was all new to me i didn't understand how all this works i would be he would always give me the you know like i would i would be trying to figure out something from Fifty thousandths of an inch, all the way down to twenty thousandths to ten thousandths. I'd sit there and like, and finally he's like, "Do you realize how thin this is? Do you realize?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I just, you know, go back and forth trying to figure stuff out. It's like it's a level of insanity to a certain degree." And I, I recently think I noticed that you said you're reworking your uh, 
um, your solo gear from Star Wars, the original Star Wars, right? Yeah, so that I just wrapped up. Um, yeah, everything on that is redone. Uh, now what, what, did you, what is the big, right, I know, but the, the truth of the matter is, Adam, and, and I mean, I, I love that you do that. I, I love it. I truly love it. But more, what I realize as well is you're probably the only one that's really ever going to notice. <laughs> You know, what oh, I mean? in, sure, a, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a positive way. I don't mean that. And, yeah. and there are other people that will. I don't. I don't. But you know what I mean. Like it's that obsession. Like I'll show my wife a build, and she's like, "It looks just like the other one," and my heart breaks a little bit. I'm yeah. Like, well, no, it's okay. All right, I get it. <laughs> so, what did you rework with your uh, new hope stuff? I mean, what was the biggest thing that bothered you enough to go back and fix it? Or yeah, so I think um, this is kind of like where our, you know. Uh, our mutual obsessions um, dovetail a little bit where, Mm -hmm. where you are doing so much of like the finite measurements and, you know, work back, working back from photographs and, you know, scaling everything from there. So much of the costuming is, it has to look, you know, the correct proportions on whoever's wearing it. So, you know, you could like, like what I'm doing right now with, um, the Deckard project Mm -hmm. is much more of a, like we are trying to make a replica of that piece. So is that a one-to-one or is that for someone, you know what I mean? Because someone, someone, you're working with someone specifically to make that, correct? Yeah. So uh, Mark Dubo and I um, have been talking about that for a a couple of years at Mm -hmm. this point. Um, And he's had a couple made, um, and wasn't super happy with, with, I'm just, I keep turning cause I'm, I'm looking yeah. at it, uh, but now, now who's Mark Dubo? Is that his, uh, so he, yeah, he is an artist. He, uh, works at Tippett studios. Um, mm-hmm. and he's like an art director and, um, also a, like a crazy prop nut like we all are. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. and so we're, we're all, you know, cut from that same cloth. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, a project like that where we're trying to get one-to-one versus, you know, doing something. Like, I'm very boxy. You know, I have a short torso and mm-hmm. longer legs, and I have a wider frame. Okay. And that's not what Harrison Ford looks like. He's much taller than me and much thinner. Mm-hmm. Um, so getting that all the proportions is always, like, when you redo one piece, well, then that throws off everything else. You of have course. to you have to make everything drive together. Um, so let me ask you a question on, on that note then. So how difficult is it to, when someone asks you to uh, make a, uh, um, um, a cosplay, because obviously everyone is different, right? So how do you receive the measurements? Is it li- just as like any tailor would do? You just, you have them either inseam, you know, their waist and, and just kind of go from that because I guess you have a little bit of room be- because the, the pants aren't skin tight, right? They have, there's a little yeah. bit of looseness to them. So you have a little bit there, but I have to imagine that's gotta be very difficult. Or at this point, is it just kind of medium, small, large? Yeah, so I have um, like the basic forms and then I'll, I can adjust them from there. Um, mm-hmm. But that's, I, whenever anybody asks on, you know, any of the Facebook groups or, or anything like that, I always encourage people and I, I do the same thing too, but mm-hmm. um, when you're doing a costume like that, try to one piece from one person that, you know, you like what they do. And then if, you know, you want to get another piece from somebody else, like you got to mix and match to get the look that you want and the Mm -hmm. fit that you want. And, Mm -hmm. you know, people to use different materials. So. Sure. um, Colors even. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Colors even. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things that have only become, um, um, come to light now so to speak you know i mean obviously like the color of the hoth jacket so to speak or even the bisman jacket yeah. right i mean they yeah. some people may just want the kenner cosplay from back in the day right you know so they'll, they'll go with that choice so yeah i mean uh, by the way that hoth jacket you made was beautiful um oh thank you thank yeah. you i'm gonna redo it <laughs> of course i don't i i wouldn't expect anything less in the, yeah. in the most positive sense yeah for yeah, sure the liners are on color so i'm gonna redo it <laughs> Now, where do you get your, um, I, I, where do you, I think I know the answer to it to a certain extent, but where do you get your information? Like, where do you, is it just scouring the internet, wherever it might be, screen grab after screen grab after screen grab? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of using Bing uh, for the images and um, mm-hmm. 
There's also a StarWarsScreenCaps.com, I think, and they have done everything, and there's even yeah. like 4K scans now, which is awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And then trying to find any books that I can that have like publicity photos where, for the most part, you can kind of say like, all right, those colors are probably pretty accurate. Um, mm -hmm. And like, just... Uh, like costumes? The Star Wars, the costumes book? I believe it's costumes, yeah, the costumes right? book is gorgeous. Um, and then there's also like a Han Solo specific one. Um, I was really pleasantly surprised by that there. one. I was very yeah, pleasantly that's great. surprised by that. I thought, I, I was going to pass on that because I, I thought it was, I didn't, I just, I did not respect it. I didn't think it was going to be much. It's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's full of information. <laughs> it really, I was totally shocked. I was, I was like, that was the most pleasant surprise for me. I was like, oh, I totally judged this. And I shouldn't have. Do you have um, the, the Chronicles book by any chance? I don't. I don't. It was, uh, I was really young when that came out and it was, mm. I mean, it was pretty expensive then, but finding a yeah. copy now, I am kicking myself for not getting the Macquarie book. The, uh, no. I think it was the, that, that two book set. When it was down to 130 bucks or even lower. Yep. What is yeah. that now? Is it back? I, 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 I've had it in my bucket, taking it out, back in. It's up. Yeah. Last time I had checked, it was, I, it, was, it could have just been like, you know, those weird in between times when there's only, you know, one person selling it on Amazon or something, sure. but it was like 500. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'll be kicking myself for sure. That's one of those. <laughs> yeah. Well, the one thing about that would be a great book, but that that's the information, honestly, the, and the reason that I never actually pulled the trigger because it still was 130 bucks, right? It's still a lot of money is because you can find all his pictures on the internet. And, and high resolution pictures. So I was like, wow, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll spend it somewhere else because, and also you get, you, I, I'm sure you're the same way, but you end up having a lot of books. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you got to weed out some of them. Um, but, uh, uh, so now you are working on, uh, you just built a Deckard blaster, which is gorgeous by the way, as well. I watched your video last night, the tutorial oh, thank you. with uh, the, um, um, your videos are, I love the music that you, you have in the music in, in your videos, by the way. Oh, thanks. It's really nice. Yeah. What's your go-to music if you're going to put music on when you're working? Do you have a specific uh, Pandora channel or anything? Um, you know, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts now um, when I'm doing anything. Um, I find with music, I get so, for whatever reason, I don't know, I get more interested in music than in podcasts. Um, mm. So I find myself way more distracted with music okay. on. Uh, mm -hmm. but I'm a huge, huge Beatles fan. Um, sure. I've got, uh, here, hold on one second. Oh, wow. What is that? Forgive me. I, I don't know. Uh, I have a friend of mine who's actually a musician, but I have a lot of, I have a guitar myself, but I can't play a lick. <laughs> what, what is that? What was I looking at? Sorry. Oh, uh, so that is a copy. It's a, it's a, Rick and Faker um, of one of John Lennon's Rick and Bockers that was used uh, for a bunch of their albums. Um, oh, no shit. Huge Bowie fan. Um, okay. I'm also recently getting into a band called um, Twin Temple, which is like doo wop. Uh, okay. So, I like Rockabilly. Um, really, like singer songwriter, breath. obviously, like singer songwriter, folk music as well, or no? Um, I like a lot of like kind of more mid-century folk. Um, okay. There, I love folk music live. Um, there's a band around here called like I think they're called um, Hot Day at the Zoo, which they're great. Um, but yeah, it's it's like sports. I can't. I don't watch sports on TV, but I love going to sports games. Okay. Do you have a sport that you follow at all? No, nothing in particular. I just I just enjoy going to games, <laughs> whether okay. it's baseball, hockey, you know, well, whatever. I mean, you, you, living around Boston, you guys have been spoiled, I know, because you've yeah. had pretty much the best of those teams for the past decade, if not longer, you know? Yeah. Always we we have good minor league teams, too. Oh, do you watch minor league baseball or hockey? Or? Uh, I mean, when I was growing up, there um, we had both minor league hockey and uh, minor league baseball right in town, so that was always nice. Oh, for sure, especially in the summertime with baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you your big uh, Dexter fan? Uh, I was. Um, I stuck with it to the end, but I, for me, it ended on season four. Okay, I have never actually seen an episode, to be honest with you. Shamefully, I know it's uh, it's campy. Well, I'd like to watch the John Lithgow uh, season. I hear he's brilliant. Yeah, it's that's great. It's a great season. Right, that's what I've that's what I've heard. Um, who do you who do you turn to? Um, 
I would imagine you've probably made quite a few acquaintances through your work, right? Um, through social media, through RPF, through a different, obviously you've, 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 um, you've made multiple, uh, it's gotta be pretty empowering too, to know that you make stuff for people that helps them get into like the, the, uh, the, the legions, right? You know? Oh like, yeah. 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 Um, I, I am in the legion. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to do too much. Um, mm -hmm. when, uh, like, uh, honestly, until, uh, last year I had been working nights and weekends, uh, mm -hmm. since I was in college. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, there was, you know, no real opportunities to get out. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I've met you through Instagram, mm -hmm. um, Adam over at Watney props who printed the Blade Runner blaster. Mm -hmm. Um, that yeah, like it's a great uh, print by the way, from the, the video, it looked like it yeah, came out really nice. The really resin clean. Looked yeah, it looked very clean and it's, it looked pr pretty durable as well. How it was, uh, look, you know, it was pretty solid. It looked really nice. It was really yeah, I did. That. I did rush part of it on the, uh, the bulldog frame. Uh, so there's the internal revolver mm -hmm. and, uh, that holds all of the weight of everything else. Uh, and I cracked it cause I was being impatient, but sure. it's, it, it held up. <laughs> Nice. Well, speaking of being impatient, I would not say that was my first thought was my God, this you're a patient gentleman because I, you, when you put the paint on something, you, uh, I can't remember what it was, but you mentioned you were going to give it a week or so to settle in. I was like a week. I think I'd give it a day at most. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is, but for, I, I don't know if it's just like New England, but anytime I spray paint anything, it mm. takes the full two weeks to cure. I, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't that, know. That, that, well, my experience is the it for me it's the weather. If in the winter time, obviously I live in California, so it's it, it is very it's nice all the time, pretty much for the most part. Um, but yeah, it's there. If the weather's cold at all, it just takes it's it's frustratingly slow. Um, yeah. But if the sun is out and it's a good day, then it, it see depending on the paint, it seems to uh, it can it can uh, you can move ahead pretty fast. To be honest, in a lot of ways. Um, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> So you now, uh, what do you, um, sorry, um, with social media, um, has that been helpful for you at all? How do you feel about social media in general? Yeah. Is, uh, you... uh, in general, it's definitely, it's definitely kind of all consuming. I feel like anybody who, you know, wants to share any of their work has to be on it, um, right. which is, you know, good and bad. Um, I would say that, uh, I definitely try to, you know, share as much positivity on there as I mm -hmm. can, uh, mm -hmm. cause we can all just always use more of that in our lives. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's, a uh, it's tough to get noticed, you know, whether it was, you know, when I was painting or, mm -hmm. you know, doing this stuff, it's a, it's a hustle. <laughs> now, what do you use for social media? Uh, mostly just uh, Instagram at this point. And uh, that's yeah. actually one thing too, where I've noticed so much traffic has kind of moved away from like the RPF onto the Facebook groups, mm -hmm. um, which then kind of become like their own communities within themselves, mm -hmm. which can be great. Cause it's, you know, you meet so many people that way too. And, you know, hopefully I'll be able to get the celebration at some time, but you know, to be able to actually see those people that you've talked to for, you know, five years. I in person. Yeah, I was disappointed, but I had a celebration was in Anaheim. So I was, and yeah. being the 40th of empire, I was stoked, stoked yeah. to go, um, you know, so you basically use now, uh, with Instagram, because Instagram is kind of interesting because the growth of it now, they've changed a lot of the formats and, and it's, it's really difficult to grow. Um, and it's, but that, that, that shouldn't, I don't think that should be, it's nice to have people obviously paying attention to what you do, but the people that know they'll find it. They always find yeah. it, right? The people yeah. that count truly find it. Right now. How does your wife, uh, um, obviously she, she supports you, uh, oh, not, yeah. Yeah. you know, like, uh, mostly and, and everything with, with, with your endeavors. Um, does it ever get in the way at all? Do you guys, as far as like, are you ever, is there ever time she's like, Hey, do you want to, leave what you're doing and kind of maybe hang out with me for a little bit or is, do you have your own do you give yourself nine to five hours or um for the most part um i am pretty diligent on uh like oh trying to be present um mm -hmm. 
I would say the social media thing has never been like an issue as mm -hmm. far as like usage goes. It's definitely, I always find myself and I, you might find the same thing, but like I, it's more of if I'm going to be on my phone, I'm researching something <laughs> and sure. then like you're just so involved in that sure. that you, you know, you're not, mm -hmm. I don't want to say you're checked out, but you're not, uh, you're not a hundred percent. No. Right. Well, that's the danger again of the phone. I mean, you, you dangle social, social media because that's generally, I think where most people get sucked into, but the vortex that I think what you're talking about, and I definitely can identify with this is just going down those, these rabbit holes of, I mean, I, I look at my phone and I have like, over 6,000 saved photos just of blasters alone. Like, yeah, like I'll save sure. everything and anything, like even people's builds, right? Like if there's a good angle on something, I want to see what someone did and see, because these reference photos are few and far between, especially with the blasters, yeah. right? Oh yeah, yeah. So it's, and then there's some people that I really, I mean, as, as, as we all do, including yourself, like there's a lot of people that I really expect, uh, respect with their work. So, and I feel their attention to detail is there. So, it's a great guide, excuse me, to see, um, um, whereas maybe you can't see it on a photo. So you're like, so what are they seeing that I'm not seeing? And then I always go back to the, the, the props. You know, that's yeah. always my true north is, is um, um, in fact, that this is my, my, my blaster book here. I've, I have so many, uh, I just have like tons of reference photos oh, that, nice. I've, that I've just <laughs> gathered. Um, yeah. But it, it's, it's great, right? I mean, that's, that's always my true north is trying to figure that out, but it, it, I'll just get information from anywhere and everywhere, but I'll be on my phone doing it. So whether it's Instagram, you know, the people don't know, they just see on your phone. So it's this, it's this right, yeah. rabbit hole um, that you can get sucked into, I should say. So you, 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 that's happens to you as well. Oh yeah. The research. Yeah. That research yeah. rabbit hole. And like, especially doing the Decker jacket, it's like, you know, trying to find good pictures of the, of certain blasters where you're like, it seems like there's only five photos. <laughs> I know there has to be more, right? but I don't know where they are. Right? They're so, not indexed on Google. So I don't know. Where do you go for uh, the Deckard information? Do you, uh, is it uh, with the gentleman that you're working with? Does he have a lot of information that he provides you with, or are you kind of out on your own and just kind of like, just, just searching, just going on the forums? It's, um, it's a bit of both. So there, again, there's not too many, really good photos and he had like a, a real good collection of you know higher res photos and even if you can find some good set photos from blade runner online they're pretty low res mm -hmm. so you know it's like the thing of like trying to see a certain angle like with okay this looks like it was lined mm -hmm. but in this picture it doesn't look like it and mm -hmm. it's a uh, you know there's always those white whale things so that you're just always hunting for right so what what is the ultimate goal with that jacket what is obviously it's one-to-one -one duplication in every sense we're trying yeah so um the way that it's constructed is pretty unique and like the collar with the ribbing and how that mm -hmm. was done and getting uh the thinness of the material the one that i'm working on right now which is you know the mock-up it's a it's a full jacket mm -hmm. um but I'm still calling it a mock-up um, because sure. I have to work like to completion. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of like specific things with like how it was lined, how it's constructed, what the proportions are. So we're now are you uh, doing it for the proportions for the film for Harrison, or are you doing it for uh, uh, someone else specifically? How it's going to fit? Yeah. So on this one, um, he's pretty confident with what the like actual proportions are pretty much one-to-one. -one. Okay. Um, as far as I know, uh, but there's certain things like the length and like the sleeve stuff that, um, based off of the jacket that he had sent me as reference, mm -hmm. I'm following along with that. Cause I know that that fits him. Mm, okay. Yeah. Is this for him to wear or is this for him just to own or is what's the, what's his goal? What's his ultimate goal? Just, he just wants a, re a replica period. We can yeah, do it he, as he pleases. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Okay. So there isn't, there isn't something else. Okay. That's fine. That's cool. Um, and do you, does he have a, de do you have a deadline that you're working with or is it just kind of. Yeah, no, we're, we're taking it, um, pretty slow. It, you know, he had sent me the jacket, uh, oh, about a year ago, and we had talked about it for like almost a year, I think, before that. 
Um, so there's no, you know, there's no deadline. It's just trying to even like just trying to find the right buttons has mm. <laughs> been like a separate quest. Um, so yeah, no, no timeline, no, um, you know, end date or anything like that. It's just trying to nail it down. But, but you'd have a, a your, it's two minds bouncing off each other though. Which yeah. Is nice. Which, yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're like, okay, I think this is this way. And he'll be like, Oh no, like I have this photo that shows it this way. So mm. Mm-hmm. But that definitely has got to help. Otherwise, yeah. you just kind of go in your own way, and it's mostly trial by error, right? Oh, yeah. And it's uh, it can get expensive, as I'm sure you know. Oh, damn, right. Yes, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get a lot of, uh, uh, yeah, for sure it can. Um, all right, well, you know, uh, anything else? What, what, look, so your Instagram handle is um, uh, Krillian Dry Goods, right? Yep. Uh, yep, that's and me. Your, um, um, is it uh, Egon on on uh, RPF? Yeah, that's that's how old the account is. That I was actually just able to get Egon. <laughs> and uh, do you have any any other place that people can find you? Or um, so if someone, what what do you think? You can pretty much, I guess, as I mentioned, Adam can pretty much, uh, well, do anything from what I've seen as far as costuming, pretty much from top to bottom. Um, and how do you take your commissions as far as like, well, how, what would be the best way for someone if someone wanted something from you? Is it, uh, do you have a, what's the time frame or you just, is it, meaning for example, say uh, I wanted a shirt, right? You'd be like, okay, well you get your measurements in and then it's, you know, uh, three weeks, a month, two months. Do you have a, a time frame for people at all? Uh, yeah, so it, it kind of depends like what I have, you know, going on at any certain time. Mm-hmm. Um, I try and get stuff out, you know, quickly for people. Um, but, you know, depends on what the project is. So, um, yeah, if anybody wants to reach out, you can just do it right on, on Instagram. Instagram's uh, nice again, way. my handle is just, yeah, Corellian Dragos. Mm-hmm. How'd you come up with that name? That's a great name, other than the obvious, I guess. Uh, so I was uh, working at a couple bars. I was managing... Um, a couple bars and one of them was in Portland, Maine. And, uh, there's a shop there that's just called Portland's dry goods, which is just, it's just a men's clothing store. And I just thought that it would be funny to just name the, the costuming stuff, Corellian dry goods as a joke to myself about a store that I liked. Sure. And yeah, I guess that's how it all works. And that's, that's great. You know? Um, yeah. And here you are right now. Now you're stuck with it is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right, man. Well, listen, Adam, I, uh, um, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Uh, honestly, um, I could probably talk to you for a long time. I don't know if that's reciprocated or not, but it's just, it's, Oh yeah. Yeah. We should definitely do this again. It's an interesting, uh, uh, we might have to, because I don't know if I'm recording any of this, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I truly, I do really do appreciate you taking the time and it really is a pleasure to talk to you and um, you know, to hear your take on things and, and how you go about it and, and have a like-minded obsession about something, especially with your attention to detail, which I truly appreciate um, and to see it unfold and, and you share it on Instagram, which, you know, uh, you know, I feel like maybe an old man here, but that's pretty much all I use, you know, and, and, and as you well know, you can, if you go in different avenues, you can get locked in there. So that's, that's a great way, but it's a great way to see your process and to see what you're working on. Um, so thank you for taking the time and thank you for uh, coming in and, uh, and joining me and, and hopefully uh, I'll be able to share this with other people and hopefully people will be able to grab from it if they want to, if not, you know, if it's just you and I, I've, I've already benefited more so than, so thank you. Did I lose you? Yeah, no, thank you. Oh. It's great talking <laughs> to you. Um, we should definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we see, I mean, honestly, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Obviously I'm going to see you on, on, uh, on, uh, Instagram. Uh, but you know, um, but I would be more than happy to talk again honestly. So, uh, you know, if I have questions or whatever, this is a great way to communicate. And, you know, now that you're uh, 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 a Zoomer, so, you know, (laughs) it's old hat for you now. Oh, one last question. So you make fedoras as well? Yes. Yeah. That started this year. Okay. Yeah. So that's, I bought a fedora off someone, an adventure fedora from Germany, I think it was, which was great. Um, But now do you, do you now have you got to the point with those that you can, because I think, I mean, fedoras are are cool. You could, it, Indiana's brim is a wider brim than a general, a normal fedora. Is that correct? Yeah. 
Oh yeah, um, yeah. So the uh, it's also it's asymmetrical, so the front and the back are a little bit longer than the sides to give it that profile. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a, definitely a caricatured hat. Right. So that was a custom built for the film. Uh, as far as I know, the it's said that they were built off the Herbert Johnson poet model. Okay. Um, but I looking at it, I think they may have cut the brims differently depending on uh, what Deborah and Newman Landis wanted um but i don't know i'm certainly certainly not a well-versed in the hats there are people who know every difference in the bash for per scene and sure is it yeah. what was his hat made out of was it rabbit fur uh yes they were 100 percent rabbit yeah so they're a little softer like a lot of them um that you can get they're either blended with beaver and rabbit or uh, all beaver that tends to just be uh more durable and a little stiffer and right, that's what I think mine is because I think rabbit fur you can pretty much just crumple up into a ball almost, right? If I'm yeah. not mistaken, yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't. even um, I have like the stiffener in the the fur you can spray it on, and it's it's still pretty soft. Yeah, I mean, you, I've seen yours in your your photos. I think you wore your own fedora that you made made for yourself in your wedding pictures. I did, yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. Good looking fedora. Did you make your wife's hat as well? I did, yeah. Oh, look at you. That's sweet. That's pretty sweet. But I see that's, yeah. Okay. I got you. That's cool. That's very cool. Thank um, you. Uh, all right. Well, listen, I could keep you here all day. I don't want to. I appreciate you taking the time. Um, I'll, if you, I would love to talk to you again uh, and maybe have uh, uh, another uh, avenue that we can speak about, um, whatever it might be. But I do. I truly, truly appreciate it, Adam. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. All right. Well, be safe. Um, be well. Uh, happy holidays uh, and uh, yeah and and 2021 is just around the corner and hopefully those vaccines can't get here soon enough right yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right man i i do appreciate it adam yeah thank you